Alrighty, we might get underway. Uh, thank you all for coming. Purpose of tonight's session is hopefully I can give you all the information that you need uh, to prepare for us and your kids going to Canberra. Uh, hopefully we can answer any questions and if I can't answer them tonight, I'll be able to. So we're videoing this for people that can't come. I'll type up a document and send them the PowerPoint. PowerPoint's not really anything apart from a visual cue to keep me on track. Uh, that's really all it is. So <clears throat> tonight we're going to cover the itinerary. I'm going to tell you effectively what we're doing. Booklets. I'll show you what our booklets are. Uh, Kamara, do you know where the booklets are? Bottom cupboard behind... Oscar, could you please get one out? What to bring the camp? That's where I kind of need your help. I'm not a parent. I can tell you what I think they need. You might be able to say, hang on a minute, we need a couple other things. Spending money, how you can contact students, uh, senior jackets, medication, questions, and another little thing at the end there, I'm going to talk to you about high school because there's some other stuff I'd like to talk to you about with that. It's not written on this. Someone might have to remind me. Okay. So, <clears throat> this year, uh, we're leaving on Sunday the 18th of August. That's perfect. Sunday the 18th of August, we'll get home on the 23rd. Very interesting fact. We leave very early. We retu return home very late. I understand that that provide some strain on family situations, having to get to school, thank you, get to school at th three o'clock in the morning uh, and get home at, uh, pick, pick kids up at midnight. Uh, actually, the way it's looking, we'll most probably be back at school at one o'clock Friday morning. However, it does save, it does save you roughly $300 per person. So when we've got that over, you know, a group of 50 people, okay, we're talking $15,000 saving by having varied times. So that's why we go that way because we don't fly directly into, we don't fly directly into Canberra, we fly directly into Sydney. If we flew directly into Canberra, our flights would be roughly $600 per person. Now you can go on the Webjet and Flight Centre and find a flight that's cheaper, but when we order 63 flights, which is how many we booked, 63 flights in one lot, their premiums are higher. So, <clears throat> so our flights into Sydney were roughly, off the top of my head, $380. Okay, and it costs no more or less for the bus to meet us in Sydney or Canberra. You tell me why that happens, I don't know. It does not make sense. But I think they're on a daily rate. So the total bus cost is $6,750 for the week. And the way we do that is we divide that evenly between students, okay? Now, so everybody's very clear. I'm gonna talk about Caitlin, is that okay? Yeah, Caitlin. Uh, has cerebral palsy, so she's not going to travel on the bus with us. We'll have a car that comes behind, and that is because the bus is quite tiring to get on and off. Okay, so on and off the bus, we do that roughly 10 to 20 times a day on and off the bus yeah. because we go to a venue, get on and off, so it, it can be quite tiring. So that way we have quite a bit of flexibility. Feel free to come in. Are oh, you right? Okay. Uh, I don't know where Miss goes. I'm going to use our document camera. I'm going to get rid of this. I'm going to show you what this is. I'm going to talk you through it. I haven't typed it up yet because there's a couple of things left to finalise. As you'd understand, it's a little bit different than every other year that I've, I've booked a camp because we actually have a lot more. Most places are capped, are capped at 40 students and 8 adults. They don't let you take any more. We're taking 53. So everywhere we go, we've, we've got to take extra. Oh. 
Okay, so <clears throat> I'll, I'll read you through our plan at the moment. So Sunday we're going to arrive here at Walloon at 3am. We're going to depart here at 3.30. It takes 45 minutes to an hour to get to the airport, depending on roadworks. Uh, we, we will travel, we will travel uh, the gateway, which is where the bus goes. The plane will depart at 6.35, so that gives us time to check in. We're flying with Qantas, so we do a group check-in. So we take all of our bags, tag them, and put them in. We don't have to check them in by name, so it takes about 15 minutes. But that gives us plenty of time to settle, go to the toilet, get ready, and we're there a good 45 minutes in the terminal beforehand, sitting down ready to go. Now, because we have a lot of people, they usually give us priority to get on, uh, and we have to be in alphabetical order. It's a bit of a pain, but that's why we get there so early. We're going to arrive in Sydney at 8 o'clock. A couple of things that are undecided yet. <clears throat> so we're going to have breakfast in Sydney. Now, they will give the kids a little bit of breakfast on the plane. We can't have breakfast before we leave because the food places at the airport don't open until 6 we need to be, we'll probably be on the plane at 10 past. So we don't have time when we're there. So I, I understand some kids are gonna get hungry. Uh, we, that is the nature of what is happening. So we, around here, most kids aren't going to eat. So we need to be mindful of that. When we get there, the first thing we do is we have breakfast. Then we travel to Circular Quay and in Circular Quay, we go on a uh, Sydney Harbour cruise with an E, not missing the E. Uh, <clears throat> we go under the Harbour Bridge and around to the left and we're going to stop and we're going to the Australian National Maritime Museum. We went there last year for the first time. It was awesome. Okay, we got to go on the replica of the Endeavour. Uh, there, is a, there is a warship that we won't go on only because of tight space and it's very time consuming to get on and off. Uh, so with a big group of us, <clears throat> we're making sure we've got plenty of time for that. So Australian National Maritime Museum, everything that we do links back to the curriculum. So every, it's a consolidation of everything we have learnt in term one, two and three because we'll be learning about it currently. Uh, so it'll link to HASS, to science, okay? So, then we're going to travel to Canberra. The trip to Canberra is three hours. We're going to stop once. So, there is a toilet on the bus. However, we're at the point where we're starting to train kids to go to the toilet before they come into class and seeing if we can maintain that. There is a, there is a toilet there. However, we're on the, on the bus. Some kids don't like to use that. So... <coughs> What we're going to do, travel to Canberra, we're going to check in. We have dinner at 6. I'll talk to you about food shortly. <clears throat> uh, travel to Telstra Tower. Go to Telstra Tower, travel back, showers and bed. So that's roughly 9.30, 10 o'clock that night. Okay? That is a huge day. However, there is three hours on the bus where most kids sleep. Okay, day, day two. Day two, we are going to wake up, six o'clock, breakfast, then we travel to the National uh, Electoral Commission. So we go to the Electoral Commission. Uh, from there, we go to the Mint. Uh, from the Mint, we'll have lunch. Uh, uh, we'll go to the Parliament House, have lunch outside Parliament House on the grass one of our very few outside times. There are, <clears throat> most of the time, we're actually indoors. So, believe it or not, it's not actually as cold as they think because most of the time we're in a heated room. So, Parliament House. This year we don't have a PEO session booked yet. So, PEO is where we get to go into a mock, a mock parliamentary sitting, but we've been doing that at school as part of our curriculum here anyway. 
So that was just a chance for us to show off. Uh, I'm being serious, they're really good at it. Uh, then we travel to the high court. The high court's great. Then we go outside. We'll probably have a game outside unless I can get booked into the likes of the Dinosaur Museum. Okay, then we travel back, have dinner at 6.15. Then we travel again and our AIS tour is at 7.30. It's an hour tour, but we'll, we'll, we actually go to the shop at the Australian Institute of Sport and we do that before we go through the tour. So that way, then we come back, shower's bed. Now, <clears throat> so sometimes we can look at a program and, and think, how, how do we come up with the time frame? We're at the mercy of hundreds of other schools. Some schools book, book five years in advance. Unfortunately, we do not have the capability to do that because our numbers fluctuate greatly. Uh, so we book two years in advance. So we're booked two years ready to go to Parliament House. We're booked for next year and the year after, as we were here. However, some places like AIS don't open their booking until the year before. So then you've got <coughs> flexible time frames. So AIS was actually available at 12 o'clock. You want to go turn that off? Um, so... AIS was available at 7, uh, oh, sorry, at 12. Unfortunately, we have to go to Parliament House, otherwise you won't get a rebate of roughly $30 a student. If we don't get the rebate, that makes it dearer for you. So, And Parliament House is re really based around why we're going. So Tuesday, wake up, breakfast. We do an embassy tour on the bus and in the car. Then we get to Questacon at 8.30, early, early check-in. We have a good morning at Questacon, that's the science centre. Then we have lunch outside Questacon, that's a nice place on the grass outside. And then we travel to the War Memorial. We have a tour through the War Memorial. Uh, then we go to the CSIRO, it's, a, it's like a science discovery centre. It's fantastic. That afternoon, we have another activity to fill that is that I haven't determined what we'll do there yet uh, then we travel back have dinner at 5.45 travel again rock climbing at 7 o'clock yep and then we uh, then we get back we have a snow talk that takes roughly 15 to 20 minutes most of that will happen on the bus so we multitask and then bed Wednesday, big day. We get up at 5.15. We have breakfast at 6 o'clock. Then we travel to Cooma. Cooma's an hour and a half. Uh, then we go to Skiko. Skiko, they're going to line us up. And they've got these marvellous people that work there. And they're just going to look at Eliza and say, this is your size and it will fit. Because they're geniuses. And we've done so many people that it will fit. Then we put our ski gear on. Uh, then we'll travel to Bullock's Flat. Okay, that's at the bottom of Perisher. We catch the ski tube, like a train that gets pulled up the mountain by a chain. And then we're going to have, uh, we're going to walk up to a chair ride. We're going to do a chair ride, not yet. Chair ride at Perisher. Okay, then we're going to go ski tube up to the Blue Cow, have lunch. I've also got a very special spot just outside that we go to, same spot. <coughs> uh, and we will have a snow play there. It's great. Then we're going to come back down, might do some tube rides, don't know yet. Go back, ski, ski tube back down the Bullock's Flats, travel back to Cooma. As our, we take all our gear off before we get back onto the bus, as the bus driver takes our ski gear back, we go and do a tour at the Snowy Hydro Centre. And... It's fantastic because we're talking about renewable energy. And this really touches on renewable energy and the Snowy Hydro scheme is huge. So then we travel back to Canberra, a late dinner at 7.30. They will have afternoon tea and morning tea in between these times. So I know it's not highlighted here at the moment, but we will have afternoon tea, morning tea. 
we put a movie on because believe it or not, you'd think, oh, that's a huge day. And as parents, you probably understand this. They're not tired when we get back because a lot of there's six hours on a on a bus, and a lot of and a lot of them sleep on the bus. So there's a lot of time for them to recuperate. They're a bit restless when they get back. So then we do a nice uh, calm activity to get them to get them ready for bed. So movie is a good option. Uh, then we go go to bed. In previous years, we have done snow day, rock climbing. And the kids coped well. Thursday, wake up 6.30, breakfast, pack all of our stuff up. Then we go to the National Museum of Australia. That's a self-guided tour, so I'll run that tour. Uh, then we travel from there and have lunch outside the zoo on, the, on a little hill. And then we have three and a half hours at the zoo. Seems like a long time, but it is not. Because the zoo is big. There's a lot to see. Okay, so we do an hour tour and then we're going to break up and we're going to have a look around the zoo ourselves. That's actually uh, the last, the second last thing we're going to do in Canberra. After that, we'll have a snack in the zoo and then we travel to the Museum of Australian Democracy. Ultimately, most people, most kids have thought that Museum of Australian Democracy was their favourite place, believe it or not. Uh, then we travel from Moad back to uh, back to this is back to Sydney. Now our flight is at 9:45. That was the only flight that we could possibly book with 63 people on the Thursday with Qantas. We could book with Virgin. However, Qantas allows us to do group check-in. They look after us. So it is it is a little late. We get back to Brisbane at 11:15. probably half an hour before we get back on the bus, like back packed on the bus. So that's 11.45, back here hopefully by one o'clock and off the bus. It's a huge day. If you're asking about Fridays as well, um, legally I have to tell you that kids are meant to come to school. <laughs> but the other part of me says that they're already at school on Friday. <clears throat> so... Put, 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 it, put it this way, uh, I'll be here, I'll be here, the last couple of years we get kids here but we also need to look after them. Now, un unfortunately, that's the nature of what, what that is and how we had to book that. It is a very full camp, it, it, is, it is very full, but you were paying $1,200 to send students interstate, you deserve to get bang for your buck and they deserve to have a good experience. We're not going there for free time because you can have that here at school. Why, and that's not what we're about, we're about providing learning experiences. So, big camp, big outcomes. Laxie. Oh, I think it's week five. So, that was our itinerary. Does anyone have any questions about the itinerary while we're on this? No? Okay, what to bring. Now, I can't remember whether I changed this from two years ago or not, so I'm going to put this all in a document to send to you so it's really easy. Big thing is, one suitcase. They can't bring... Like Some kids ask me, can they bring their pillow? Can they bring <coughs> stuff like this? My answer is no, because it doesn't fit. The other thing we need to be conscious of, some kids want to buy some souvenirs, which we'll talk about a little bit later on. They need to pre-plan how much room they're going to need. If it doesn't fit in their bag, they don't bring it home. And that's the nature of what it is. We don't pack it up, send it home, it stays there. So we need to be very prepared for that. Uh, Students will be given all appropriate clothing for snow conditions. Now, good waterproof gloves can be purchased. Scratch that, good waterproof gloves are being purchased. It's part of your cost this year. You will have snow gloves included in your cost. Okay, we worked out a deal with Skiko. They are going to provide gloves as well. So gloves are to keep, 
So they, they did a deal because we had 60 people that said that they were taking that same deal. Now we don't have to go and raid Aldi and so forth. It, it, it worked out only $2 dearer per person, so you're getting a pair of gloves for a couple of bucks. <clears throat> one set of, wait, one set of pyjamas or two sets, whatever you determine is correct. Underwear, tidy, neat, day wear. I'll tell you the stuff that I really think is important. They're going to need a school shirt, okay? Senior shirt. Tommy, you stand up. It looks great, doesn't it? I think they did a great job. Anyway. <laughs> so, I would like the kids to wear their senior shirt to Parliament House. They will have a senior jacket. Kamara, would you mind getting a jacket too, please? Thank you, Kamara. Uh, yeah, I would like one. So. Oh, I, I don't want to tell you to take it off. I want to show people the inside of the jacket. So, <clears throat> so I would suggest, I would suggest that jeans are not a good option for Canberra because it it rains a little bit. Okay, a lot of he, a, a lot of heavy dew. Uh, when they get wet, they don't dry well. So that's why I'd recommend against jeans if possible. Uh, obviously, it's like any school-based activity. Nothing that is uh, inappropriate. No singlets. I would also suggest no shorts because it is cold. So you need to be comfortable. So senior shirt, Parliament House Day. I would suggest that we bring a pair of socks for every day plus two extra pairs. Okay? We need one spare pair for the snow because if you do fall into an ice river, you will need them. That would never happen. Kerry would have never led them into that. We Actually, that's it. For those of you who might have missed that, we did take kids through a different track and there were people with toboggans and they fell into an ice river and we had to get a change of socks. So, yeah, I think Jacob was... Uh, was yeah. Uh, <clears throat> we don't need a parka, so that's a, that's a change. A beanie, that's, a, that's essential. Beanies are great. When it says a hat, we want a bucket hat, no caps. Okay. Plastic bag for dirty clothes, warm pair of gloves. Uh, so this is obviously the one I did a couple of years ago because I haven't changed. Uh, I would also suggest they bring, if possible, two pairs of shoes in case one got wet. Now, believe it or not, if they get wet, and that's when kids can get sick. Okay, Bring their immune system down. It's not going to help. So we would like, if you can... Bring two pairs of shoes if we can fit it in. Now, <clears throat> we're also going to have a, a backpack. Okay, In the backpack, we're going to have a booklet, which we will go through soon. We're going to go through the booklet. Uh, that, that will go in there with, their, with a lunchbox okay, that they can, they can put some, some of their provided food into. They're also going to have a uh, uh, pencil case, and that will be it. Okay, so that, that backpack is effectively just for that stuff. Uh, they'll need their toiletries, uh, very clear, no aerosols, not allowed to take them with us, no makeup. Alex? <laughs> Joke, mate. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> we we don't we don't need that stuff. Uh, we're in year six. Uh, bedding is supplied by the accommodation. You need a towel. Uh, kids are recommended to bring a wallet. I'll talk about money a little later. Uh, and our backpack will be carry on luggage. Uh, we won't worry about that because that was wrong. Uh, before I talk about this. Does anyone have any questions about what to bring? Because it was very vague. 
even though I'm confused. <laughs> water bottle, great question. <clears throat> we actually provide them water bottles every day. So they will have, a water, they'll have water bottles at every interval and they can reuse those water bottles. So I would actually suggest that we do not need to bring one of those water bottles with them. They can, if, however, if they like. Problem is, if they put that water bottle into their bag and it leaks, yeah. it can damage their stuff. Girls? School hats, great idea. Can we bring the water bottle and put snow in? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <clears throat> um. Yeah, it's here somewhere. I think someone moved it, but I do have snow here. Uh, but we will be taking some for a science experiment. So we will bring some back. I'll get to your questions later now. So, <clears throat> sorry Alex. Items not allowed. We're not bringing them. Chewing gum. Oh, stereos. I must have written that a long time ago. Uh, toys and gadgets. Uh, any additional money, thongs because your toes will fall off, sleeveless shirts, untidy clothing, razors or razor blades, you don't, obviously anything like that. So if, <coughs> aerosols of any kind, pillows. Now this is where it gets interesting. Electronic devices of any sort, no iPads, no phones, okay, nothing. No cameras. We have somebody that will take photos for us. Okay, we're, we're going, we'll provide you with uh, <clears throat> your choice of disc with the photos or we can put it onto a USB for you with all the photos from camp. Or, uh, <clears throat> I, don't, I really don't want kids to, uh, to experience this through a screen because otherwise they're more worried about taking photos of things than experiencing them and seeing them for what they are. The other one is phones. Kids do not need a phone. Okay, uh, I'm very uncomfortable with taking kids away and providing them the ability to communicate in a way that is not visible. Right. <clears throat> so it's protection from myself as well as protection for you and protection for them. If you need to talk to them, call me. If they need to talk to you, they can call you from my phone. I'm happy for that to happen. And we've, had, we've done that in the past. But <clears throat> that, is, that is protection for all of us. So we don't take them. Uh, money. We want kids... Uh, it's not compulsory. It's just some parents would like us to provide students the opportunity to buy a souvenir when they go to Canberra. With 53 kids going through a gift shop, takes a long time. We're going to go probably to three gift shops, and that's it. Questacon, the Australian Institute of Sport, and the zoo. Okay, most gift shops actually sell Parliament House. Uh, they'll sell a Parliament House postcard. Okay, they'll be a dollar. Miss Bell, would you be able to just hold up some stuff over here? Okay, so I'm going to show you some things that you could potentially buy. Just, so snow globe. Snow globe. We've got a snow globe from Perisher. Okay, that's snow globe from Perisher. Miss Bell, how much was that? It's written on the bottom. I kept it on there. Six, Six so seven dollars. Miss Bell, can you hold up the, uh, the rock? <clears throat> Miss Bell, you're going to need to wash your hands because you're holding dinosaur poo. <laughs> so that's from, that's from the dinosaur museum. That is dinosaur poo. <clears throat> uh, so it's fossilised. Uh, that was $25. I bought, that so, I bought that so I could do that a year later. <laughs> okay. Uh, the Newton's Cradle. Newton's Cradle, that was $25. Mind you, that comes in a box, set up like this. So if they're buying that, they need room to put that in. You can buy a jacket from AIS that looks like this and it'll cost you $100. Whoopee. 
Yep. A pair of shorts from AIS will be 40 at least. A shirt, you're looking at $40. It is not cheap. Oh, snow. That's what snow looks like. It's different, isn't it? Okay. So I've just put a recommended figure of $50. If, you're, if your kids are going to bring any more than $50, I'd like you to tell me. Some parents would like to, their kids to take $200. If they were going to do that, you need to tell me. Because we also need to cater for how much money we're carrying. I'm not going to let the kids take their own money. Okay, we're going to supervise their money and lock it away safely because we need to be accountable for that. So that gets to the point how to bring their money. We don't want cash. Okay? You can buy cards from the post office. Uh, does anyone know how, remember how much they are? So it costs you $5.95, you'll get an FPOS card everywhere we go, allows them to use that. Okay, I believe they're re redeemable any anywhere, so you're able to spend them. We don't want to take cash. In the past, we've taken cash. I've taken a, a lot. La um, two years ago, we took cash. I ended up taking a bag that weighed about 20 kilos full of coins. <laughs> yep. And it's a nightmare to sort when we get home. This way we can put it into a card wallet and we can distribute the cards to kids and keep them safe. You can get single load ones that will leave two five Yeah. So you can load it with a husband. Yeah. If it's not loadable again, one that's the post office you can Oh, perfect. So go see Alison and we'll be sorted out. <clears throat> oh. Okay, so so that's that's a Effectively, the money. Okay, contacting students. I think I've touched on that already. If you need to contact them, ring me. All right. There will be some parents. There will be some parents going to Canberra with us to assist. I'm going to be very clear. Do not contact them to talk to your children. That is inappropriate because they're in an assistant role. I don't think it's appropriate for you to contact children through that. If you want to talk to your kids. Contact them through us. Uh, and we're more than happy for that to happen. Okay, that's the same as uh, we'll have a conversation with everybody about photos. We, don't, we won't send you photos early. We'll put photos up on Facebook and things for every, everyone to see. We'll give you updates. We'll send you group photos of everyone. We've got a text message list. Uh, <clears throat> and then that way, everything is very transparent. Okay, so that... Sorry, no. No. No, so just if, if there are any photos and if, uh, if there were students that had uh, privacy things that we, we couldn't identify them, they wouldn't be identified and we wouldn't show them in photos, but we might put some photos of us up, say, at Parliament House going through a tour and things like that, and that, that'll just go on to the Walloon State School PNC Facebook page. Uh, and I'll send them to Greg. So the way we do it is I, I'll get some photos, I send them to Greg, so I check them, he checks them, they go through there. So they go through two sets of hands and we make sure everything's appropriate. Uh, so before I get to the questions, a couple of things I didn't touch on. This is a booklet your kids will get. Now, I think this one was mine. Uh, also, no, not mine, Caitlin McKimmons, this one. Uh, it'll have a contents page, some information. It'll tell them what, who everyone's buddies are, where they stand in line. So we go as far as, uh, we've got a document that is on this very clean desk. Oh, geez, your desk is clean, Miss Bell. I can't believe how clean it is. Can you find, it's just there. There, there, there is a, what, what we did was we took requests from students and we've created what we call a sociogram. So it's how students interact with each other positively, negatively, how they feel about other students, who influences them, how they work well with others. Because 
we're ultimately we're about setting kids up for success. And to do that, it does take a little bit of thought. So here we're going to have what their buddies are, what order they will stand in line. So that way when we get off the bus, we actually get off in the bus in order. So buddies number one get off first, buddies number two, buddies number three. So then when they, they get used to that over a couple of days, and we get off really quick and we're in line, rather than everybody get off, get in line, and then we're structured. We have complex personalities in grade six, and that's the way we deal with them. So we'll have our cabins. We need to be, understand who's in what cabin and where it is. We're very strict around cabins. Kids aren't allowed out at all. And I do hourly checks. The people that are with me help. We, we make sure that... Uh, because ultimately, we're in a motel. Okay? It, it is a motel that schools use, but also it's open to the public. So we are very vigilant when it comes to our students' safety. Uh, so we've got a few little tips on each page. Uh, then each day we'll have an itinerary and it will actually go as far to identify the learning expectations from each place. Okay, so if I'm the flip to a random page, the War Memorial. So one of the learning expectations for a student by the end of year six is that they examine key figures and events that uh, led to Australia's uh, Federation Constitution. Okay, so that's part of the events that led up before Federation. And uh, they recognise the responsibilities of electors and representatives in Australia's democracy and how that ties in. So we have those conversations about what they're meant to learn, how they're meant to learn it. So they've got a few questions, handy hints. Uh, and we go through, and that's theirs to keep. So instead of it just being a camp, it's a learning experience. Uh, and so that's the booklet. Then we got our jackets. The reason I wanted this was so I could open up and show you inside. It is actually, it's lined, it's not overly thick, but I can tell you they are warm. Because we'll get kids to take like a hoodie and wear this over the top and it's well warm enough because anytime we're outside, it's middle of the day. If it was raining or cold, we would keep them inside. Everywhere is heated and it's, we're easily identifiable. We've had multiple comments. Uh, one from a former principal of this school who didn't recognise that it was us and thought we were a private school from Brisbane. So, which was interesting. Uh, Anyway, our jackets will need to be ordered shortly. So if you would like to have some input and help us out with sizing, okay? Uh, otherwise, we are going to, we'll just measure your kids up and size them. All right? This is all included in your cost. So this is included in the cost to go to camp, and we manage to get that for you. Okay, so that's the jacket. I just touched on those briefly. Uh, before I talk about high school stuff, who's got a question? Has Miss Bell had her flu shot yet? <laughs> <laughs> yes. That was a big part of last year's Yeah. Miss yeah. <laughs> Green, the jacket. I didn't get sick. If we have one from last year, it's barely been no, worn. Can we deduct it? No. I was fine. Both of you. I was fine. No, can't deduct the price. You can say that it's included in that in that price. Yeah. Uh, there will be, it will be a little bit different this year, different, little bit of a different look as well. <clears throat> so, if that answers that question. Yeah. So, medication. Oh, I did have medication. I'm sure I have medication written down. Okay, medication. If, you, if your student requires medication, they will, they'll have to give it to the office to, and sign it in. Uh, it also has to have a note from a doctor. Yep. yep. Is it also Panadol's in that too? Panadol's in that too. And she also needs physiotherapy twice a day. Okay. So that's probably something we're going to have to talk about and how we can provide that. It's being in the cold. She yep. can end up back in hospital. Yep. So that, that's something you'll have to help us out with. Yep. Um, we're able to provide that if and facilitate that the best we can. Yep. 
but I'll have to. We, so you've seen the itinerary. Yeah. So, yep. So we'll talk about how how we fit that in each day and what that looks like. Uh, medication. So the way medication works is legally we have to sign that out to kids. Yeah. So every time medication is given out in the office, we have to sign it out to kids. Uh, so we have to sign it, date and time, and administer that to them. So uh, that's the way medication will work. Uh, now we do have a a few complex cases with kids that require complex medications, uh, whether it be IMI or, or so forth. We're, now we've got Jody Baker will be on hand. This is staff-wise. I'll talk about staff. Jody Baker, myself, Meredith, and Greg, our principal, will be attending. Jody Baker has been handed a booklet. Yeah. For Jessica's. Perfect. Office. So, we'll have those four staff members those four staff members will administer any medication. So if, if we require extra training prior to departure, that's what we'll have to do. So we'll make sure, um, but I'm not comfortable um, uh, putting a parent in the, uh, like uh, Andrea is attending as a parent helper, I'm not comfortable putting her in a position uh, to, to do that for someone else yep. for her protection, even if she is more competent than me. That's correct. So, so we, <laughs> yeah, so that, 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 that's, um, so we'll, we'll make sure we can, if we need extra training to brush up in anything, we will, but if anyone wants to talk to us privately about any of that, make sure you talk to us, because if we don't know, we don't know, so, who else has got a question? Ms. Bell, you got a question? You got a question? No? All the kids are gone, they have all the questions. <laughs> Alex had a question, he's gone. <laughs> and I was supposed to remind you about High school. High school. Okay. <laughs> oh, all right. High schools. So, we're at the point of the year, believe it or not, where I start, Meredith starts interacting with high schools. So, they ask us where students are at, how they are socially, uh, what they can do to help, and we, inter we interact with them that way. So Rosewood High has been in contact because they've got their days of experience coming up on the 12th and 26th. If your student's going to Rosewood High, uh, I would recommend you getting uh, an, an enrolment pack from them uh, and doing that. Uh, Faith and Westmac, their days, uh, their their orientation days are not till later in the year, and usually parent, uh, people that are going to those schools are already on top of that, so that's not, not really a drama. Uh, but if you're going to Rosewood, uh, I would suggest you get on top of it quickly because we need to have a, I'll have, send a note out and it will have to be signed for them to be allowed to go. Um, so that, that's why we ask you so early what high school you're intending to send your kids to, so that way we can interact with them and help the high schools out because they're notoriously slack at providing pathways for students to get to school. So we help as much as we can to make that easy for our kids. Alex, did you have a question, mate? Does it include goggles? <laughs> yes, you can... Um, we don't, in, we don't include goggles. I recommend you bring sunglasses. But if you've got ski goggles, bring them. If you want. Yep, good question. Good memory. Yep. Uh, does anyone have any questions about the high school stuff? Or anything at all? Okay, well, if, you, if you remember your question when you get home... Oh, or... you can talk about food more. Oh, yeah. Yeah, food. yeah that's <laughs> important. All right. So, so if kids get hungry, Rob's chef, he's coming with us, so he'll cook. Uh, uh, anyway, food. What is we can, we can put dietary recommendations in for kids, but when we have 53 students, we can't put preferences in for we don't like, we don't like this and we don't like this and we don't like this because that makes it 
really, really difficult for a, a caterer to manage. So dinners, uh, we'll have roast one night, we will have uh, uh, spaghetti bolognese, we'll have chicken schnitzel, gravy, chips. Uh, I think fish and chips is off the menu this time. Uh, they, they have lasagna, lasagna and salad uh, for dinners. Every breakfast, every breakfast will consist of choice of cereal, choice of hot food. So that will be hash brown, sausages, ba uh, baked beans, toast, uh, yeah, eggs. So it's a, it's a very big breakfast, which sets them up for the day. Uh, lunches, we'll probably have sandwiches and uh, this, like the like small cut up subway platter on one day, hot dogs on another day. Um, what, what, I, what I will do is I'll do up a big list of uh, everything that the kids will be able to eat and that what is scheduled on each day. I need to know very early if they're not going to eat it because if they get there and say, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not eating that, well, I, I really hate to say it, but tough luck. They've got, they've, that's, at, at some point, that's our choice. So we've got to be very prepared. Um, mind you, so, sometimes that doesn't work. <laughs> However, I, I must say that in my experience in the last couple of years, we've, we've had one kid that didn't like something one day and by the second day loved everything. So, so allergies are a different story though. If, they're, if they have an allergy, we cater for allergies, uh, whatever that allergy may be. So if it's, if it's uh, specifically for a diet, uh, something that's going to assist that way, then that's the way we cater for that as well. So we can make accommodations. I'm, I'm trying really, really hard this year to make sure that we don't need money for anything else because pr previous years we used our own money for, for breakfast on the first day and dinner on the way home. Instead this year I'm going to make sure I contact places and say provide us breakfast and we pay them directly so that will just be added on to your cost. So it won't cost you anything extra, it will just minimise the amount of time that we spend with a group of 60 people trying to run through a checkout because by the time the first person's paid and eaten, the last person's just going through. So we have a very large time difference uh, to, to get kids through. So that's the biggest thing i found. However, if we ring up and pre-book, they're ready to go. So. No, that's I'm trying to include all of that, yep. Lunch, lunch as well, so. That way we won't have to do any of that. The reason we did morning, the reason we did morning tea there, was because uh, was because we got on the on the cruise and we ate outside. However, it just so happens that there are a lot of places very close to the Maritime Museum uh, that are able to cater. There's a there's a cafe just near there, and I'll contact them. Do they so. go to the mint? Did you say yes, the they get they go. Do they still do the yep. Three dollars. Three dollars for one dollar coin. Three dollars. You. So you are. You are able. You are able to drop that coin. Uh, drop the money off to us, and if you drop the money off to us, we'll tick it off. We're going to put it all into one bag with all the coins, and we will have money there. Now their gift shop is rather dear. We won't go through their gift shop, but they can get the coin. Yeah, so they can they can get the coin. How, um, however, you'll need to drop the money off beforehand. I'll put that in a letter as well that gets sent out. So it takes a little bit of preparation for us to be ready. So. Sorry, Joe. I might have missed the brief earlier, but the how many different locations? Uh, how many different locations? One. One. Uh, there is. 
there is laundry facility there that we don't use, unless it's an emergency. If it's, a, if it's necessary, uh, let's say a kid threw up on themselves, yeah. Um, uh, uh, we're just so jam-packed that we don't have time. Um, <laughs> um, <laughs> so... So, um, we're st if anyone wants to look it up as well, we're staying at the Sundown Villas. Uh, Sundown, Sundown Villas, or I think it might be called Sundown uh, Village Resort now. I've got the... Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a relatively re relatively nice place. Um, we've stayed... It's across, it's across the road from the Greyhound track. <laughs> So, so if, it, if, if anybody's looking for it on a map, the Greyhound track's more noticeable than that, so you see that. Uh, uh, the best part about, it, about staying there is it's about 10 minutes to everywhere, so it's great. It is great. Uh, does anyone have, else have any questions? Thank you. All right, um, stay around for the meeting, I guess. Apart from that, get out of here. If you want us to email you to remind you to send us out the reminder notes.